The road to glory begins. We are going to be playing with Sunderland. Now, we did a vote and my God, it was ridiculously close. So it was up for 20 hours, I believe, or 21 hours. And up until around the 15th hour, it was literally 50-50 between Sunderland and and Portsmouth and I was actually going insane so thank you for that guys but I can announce and reveal that Sunderland did win the poll by the end of the 21 hours by 52% to 48% ridiculously close okay so I am saying this now I hate doing polls I hate it it's too difficult sometimes I could not believe it I thought one team was going to win it by a good 10% so well I got it wrong, but you guys wanted Sunderland more than Portsmouth, very slightly. So if you really are upset by the fact that I'm doing Sunderland and not Portsmouth, please don't be too upset because I'm going to do Portsmouth at some point. Whether it's towards the end of FIFA 20, whether it's FIFA 21, or whether it's on stream. I haven't decided yet, but Sunderland is going to be the road to glory in England for FIFA 20. So let's get it started. I cannot wait for this. I am so, so excited to be doing a Road to Glory. The Arsenal career mode and the RB Leipzig career modes were great fun, but there's nothing like a Road to Glory. Come on, we're going to be here at Sunderland for at least minimum four seasons. I want to take them all the way to the Premier League and eventually I want to win the FA Cup, the League Cup and of course the Champions League. Now I'm not saying that's going to happen in the first four years because it's not. It definitely isn't. Right now we are in League One. We've got to of course get into the Championship within the first season which is domestic success. So they want us to win the league. It's not even about making it into the promotions or no what do you call it? Uh, the playoffs. They don't even say that. They, they want me to win the league. So it's quite clear that we are favourites. I mean, we should be. The, the squad, when I show you, you will see it is still very decent for League One. So I'm hoping to win the title in the first season. I think we'll get into the championship and then maybe it could take two seasons to get into the Premier League. It really depends on the Youth Academy players we get, how lucky we get. If we get some great players, then that will help. It depends on the signings I make, whether I can keep certain players. It has a lot of variables, but if I can get into the Premier League within two seasons, that would be incredible. But there are some downsides to that. We, we would be weak compared to a lot of the other sides there, and we would probably be relegated straight away. But you never know. My idea here, guys, is promotion then sustain for a year, then promotion, and then Premier League begins in season four. That's probably what's going to happen, but we will find out. Not only do they want me to win the league title, they want me to get to the round of 32 in the FA Cup. Uh, continental success, none, of course. Financial, none. We are probably the richest club in League One. Not that I'm going to be spending an insane amount of money, because as you know, I want to use the Youth Academy in this series. So youth development, this is a low priority, so it wouldn't be a big deal if I didn't use the Youth Academy. So I will be making some normal signings as well. They want me to sign one player from my Youth Academy in the defence. So we will, we will probably sign up a centre-back. I'm hoping to get a really good left-footed centre-back. I don't know, we'll, we'll soon find out what we get. They also want me to grow one Youth Academy player by at least five overall as soon as they've grown, play them in five matches, either as part of the starting eleven or coming in as a sub. I bet you that doesn't even work. I guarantee you that these little things they have in career mode actually don't work. We will find out very soon, I'm sure. And the brand exposure is a medium priority, and that is to sign a first crucial team player or a crucial first team player assigned to midfield or forward. So that shouldn't be too difficult. And here is the team. This is it. My Sunderland team from the start of season one. A few of these players, of course, won't be around forever. One or two of them already at a very high age in their career. McGeady being one of them out on that left side. He's 33 years old. He's a vital player for the first season and maybe the second season. But I will look to, of course, replace him at some point. We've got Will Grigg up front. Yes, I will be saying he's on fire a lot and that their defence is terrified. We've got Maguire at Cam. He's a left midfielder and a striker as well. We have quite possibly one of the best names in the game. We have Gooch. 
Then we have Dobson in midfield. I actually rate this guy. 21 years old, six foot one. He's kind of an all-rounder. I think he might have a big part to play alongside with Power. I be Oh my God, please tell me his name's Max Power. I've got to check this. What is his actual name? I don't know too much. No, 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 <laughs> no. He's actually called Max Power. I swear that is just his parents trolling. How can you call your son Max Power? That is brilliant. I absolutely love that. I said it as a joke. I didn't realize his name was actually Max Power. My God, you can already hear the jokes, can't you? The puns when he scores, when I hit it with power. <laughs> God. <laughs> I, I apologize in advance, guys, but he is captain and I actually think that's a very good central midfield partnership. 68 rated, 66 rated, both still relatively young. Well, Power is still relatively young. Dobson is young. Now we've got O9, I think you say his name is. Onean, O9. O I, I will learn these names, I promise. Now I know this guy can play midfield. You can see it there. I've seen a few tweets coming my way saying play him in midfield. So I don't know where I'm at with that. Maybe I sign a right back and then play him in central midfield. But either way, pretty decent right back. He will be starting there for now. Then we've got Flanagan, Lynch and Hume. I'm, I, I have no idea about some of these players. I know Flanagan, I've, I've seen him before in FIFA. Lynch, I mean, stats wise, he's okay for season one, I guess. He's a left footed centre back, which... You know, I like to have that left footed on the left side, right footed on the right. Um, why is he not captain? That's interesting. 31 years old. Maybe he's a recent signing. I, I'm not too sure. But then we've got McLaughlin in goal as well. 31 years old. Overall, it's a very decent first team. And then on the bench, we have Ozturk. We've got McLaughlin again, another McLaughlin. We've got Leadbitter. I always want to call him Lead Biter. You know, you get lead in pencils and like you're in school and you chew on that. That's him. He, he chews on his pencils. Then we've got McGough. Is that how you say his name? I'm going to have to learn how to say his name. We've got Embleton Watmore. I remember him in the Premier League. I remember he started uh, his, his first few games. I remember one of them was actually against Newcastle. And I remember thinking he's going to be a decent player. He's 25 now and he's 67 rated. We've got McNulty there. We've got... Wyke, Kimpioka, I know this guy is hopefully going to be a star for us in the future, but 54 rated, really? We've then got Mumba, another young player that I think could be potentially massive for us. We've got Samut, we've got Burge, and we've got Willis. So that's the team. And this is the starting 11 that I'm going to go with. The 4-2-3-1, as you know, is my absolute favourite formation in this game. Now, where do I see improvements being needed? So 100%, we need to bring in a central attacking midfielder. We've got three centre mids here. Well, one CDM and two centre mids. And Maguire can play there, but of course, 30 years old, we are going to need to invest in a attacking midfielder that sits behind the striker. And maybe we sign someone now that will be here for the whole series and kind of build the team around him. I'm feeling like also... Just a central midfielder in general. Um, Leadbitter, I'm I'm not too keen on using that 49 pace. Ugh. You'd, you'd expect his passing to be just unreal, but it's 68. Dobson's got 64, 68 from power. He's not even that great. If you haven't got pace, you would hope he's a bit more technical, but he's not. We've then got another centre mid and another centre mid. I think I obviously want to use Embleton more than I want to use these two. So maybe a central midfielder comes in as well. Uh, striker, potentially. I think Grigg is a decent option for League One, but when we get into the championship, these three strikers, they're just not going to be good enough. I'm also expecting I'm going to really miss having a right midfielder that's left-footed. I'm a big fan of inverted wingers. Uh, so you get them coming in on their strong foot. So you want a right midfielder being left footed and then a left midfielder being right footed, just like McGeady is. And I'm going to be doing McGeady spins all day. OK, he invented that skill. I don't think he invented it, but it's certainly been named after him because he used it all the time. So I think those are some very good options, but also centre back. So I'm feeling like we need to invest in the core of this team, maybe not striker, but Attacking midfielder, centre midfielder, and a centre back, and possibly a right back. Possibly. Do we have a spare left back? We don't. Okay, so left back is probably more important because if Hume gets injured, who plays there? We don't actually have one. Okay, 
Well, I know already where I want to invest. I now need to decide whether I sign players in those positions that already exist, actual signings, or I find young players for my youth academy in those positions. Right, after spending a long time looking through players, I've decided that there's a certain criteria I'm looking for, and that is I want these players to have their real face just because I really, really prefer it. I love it when a player, even young players, especially young players, have their real face. So everyone listed here has their real face. And these are the players that I will potentially look to sign over the next few transfer windows, I guess. So we've got Dahlberg, the only goalkeeper I've found so far. I, I can look for more. It's just not a priority. We've got uh, Kijana Hoover uh, from the Netherlands. I've probably pronounced that one wrong. We've got Reggie Cannon. We've got Dest. Now, I signed him in my RB Leipzig career mode, and I barely got to use him because, of course, we had Klosterman, we had Mukiele. They were both very good options. So maybe Dest is a good shout. We've got Tuan Zebe, who no doubt will be the most expensive player on this list. So I'm not too sure we're going to be able to afford him, but maybe one for the future. We've got Kilman. He started for Wolves recently, and he impressed Maybe he could be a good shout for us. I know he's massively underrated. I believe he's something like 65 rated, 66 rated. So we'd have our work cut out trying to train him up. We've got Simpson and both these defenders here are left footed, by the way. So I think they would go into the team straight away. Then at left back, we've got Robinson. We've got Tofolo. Then in midfield, we've got Chalaba. And we've got Chong on the right. Ebo Bisse, I'm probably butchering his name as well. Edwards, probably going to be too expensive. I know he's in his 70s. We've got Harper, Ecklenkamp, Gravenbirch. I will learn how to say his name. I'm pretty sure that's not it. Is he actually six foot three? What? My God, what a beast. We've got Chimacho. We've got Brown. Gomez, the only cam I could really find that I was potentially excited to use. So maybe we look into signing him. We've then got Parrot, Ida, Ida. And Ashley Fletcher, who actually played for Sunderland on loan, I believe. I have watched the documentary, the um, Amazon documentary on Sunderland. What was it called? Was it Sunderland Till I Die or something? So I know of Fletcher. I know he's a decent player. He wouldn't be for the entire series, that's for sure. But maybe a championship uh, type striker, you know, someone that's just going to get us into the Premier League. But we've got some really good choices here. They're all youngsters, of course, ranging from 23 to 17. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I really want Graven Birch. I think he would be incredible. Six foot three, he's got sprint speed, ball control, short passing, shot power, and agility as his main stats there. What? That's crazy. Tofolo and uh, Chalaba also signings that I'm interested in. Tofolo would be a great backup left back, I feel like. Um, Robinson could be good as well, but I think he will be a little bit too expensive. And he's recently joined, so that's not going to work. Kilman, I'm definitely interested. Imagine bringing in a Premier League centre-back that maybe is underrated, but we could grow him into a superstar. He could be a future captain for us. He could be our Harry Maguire going from nothing to one of the biggest teams. Okay, that could be something we look at. Tuan Zebe, I won't be able to afford. I don't think we need a right back right now. We've got two right backs at the club. So, yeah, I need to scout all of these players. We're going to kick off the Youth Academy as well. Of course, it's going to be expensive. The uh, the actual uh, scouts can cost quite a lot of money if you get a high-rated one. So, I guess we should go and have a look at that now. Okay, I didn't realise they would be that much. That is... Wow. 3.6 million. For a five star, five star. I can't afford that. If I want to sign some players and get a couple of youth scouts, that just isn't going to happen. So experience means they will find a larger number of players. Judgment will find higher quality players. So I want better judgment than experience. And we don't really have many good options here. I'm quite tempted just to go with Edwards and Shaw. I'm sure, no pun intended, that it would mean it would take longer to find these absolute gems, but we will get there. We've got so much time in a road to glory, I, I really don't need to be spending that kind of money. Although, 17k, I mean, that's pointless. Why don't I go for P2, or whatever his name is, Oscari P2. Let's, let's take Cameron Edwards and see who replaces him. Are we going to get another three-star, three-star? No, we got Nelson Palacios. We'll take him. 
Do we go with just two? Who else popped up? Uh, I mean, maybe we could go with Bjorn Dietrich, however you say his name. 200k. Um, what I want to do is scout within the British Isles. I want to go England, Scotland, Ireland, you know, those kind of countries, Wales. I don't know if I want three at the moment. Maybe I come back and, and get another one if I want one. I think I think two's fine at the moment. We'll go England and Scotland, I think. So let's set up the network here. We're going to go with Cameron Edwards in England for nine months. And I had to bring in a forward and, well, hang on, no. It was, was it a defender I needed to sign up? Let me double check this. I know you guys will probably remember, but I've got so many things going on through my head right now. It's difficult to remember some of these things. So sign one in the defense, okay? And it was the brand exposure to sign a forward. So we'll go for a forward player that's a real player, and then we'll go for a defensive player that is from the Youth Academy. So let's go ahead and set him up now. We'll go with England, three months, and we'll go with... Is there defensive-minded? Yep, they've still got that. It's the first time I've used the Youth Academy in FIFA 20. It'll be interesting to see if they've made any changes. I very much doubt it. Then we're going to go, we can go Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, or Scotland. I'm going to go with Scotland. I'm going to go nine months, and I'm going to go any. I don't mind what I'm looking for there. So those are the two scouts sent out. That leaves us, wow, we spent 666,000 on that. We've got just over 4 million. Uh, I could probably squeeze a little bit more out of this. I don't think the wages are going to be much higher. I think my wages are around, what, 5k for a good player at the moment? Out of interest, let's have a look. So McLaughlin, 5k. Let's let's go via the top here. McGeady on 10k? What? That's a lot of money. Wow. Okay, but we're not selling McGeady. I know a lot of people probably expected me to because he's 33, but honestly, we need his type of quality. He's 72 rated, and he will play a big part for me. But we're looking at capping our wages at 10k. I don't really want to pay more than 10k for a player at the moment. So let's, what's this? We've just got some emails about the scouts, haven't we? Yeah, let's get rid of that. What do we do then? What do I prioritize? I think, I think Gomez is such a good shout. He will be incredible for us. And I almost feel like I could probably get him quite cheap and build my team around him. So what if I went with Gomez and Graven Birch? wherever he is. I don't know how much they're going to be. We'll obviously scout them first. So that's two signings. Let's say that's probably about 4 million. The prices in the game are broken, by the way. What I will do, okay, if if you guys don't like the fact that I can sign someone like Gomez for a couple of million, because of course that is ridiculously cheap. He goes, he probably goes for 20 mil in real life, more than that. So let me know if you guys think I should then deduct money in the future as well. Almost like a a clause in the contract. Imagine you're playing football manager. You sign the player, but you're paying over over years. So let me know if you think there's, that's something I should include in this. I could always say next season I have to deduct 5 million because I bought uh, Gomez. I, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that because I do want to keep it somewhat realistic. But with Road to Glories, you need to sign some of these young players, you know. So I think, I think Graven Birch and Gomez would be incredible. So those are my two favourites at the moment. We do have a pre-season tournament that I would love to win because that will give us some more money. Uh, we've got an offer coming in for our keeper. We're going to go ahead and reject that. He is our main goalkeeper right now. And we've got Max Power. Oh my God, it's so good. He's giving me a warm welcome. Thank you. I'm excited about the future. I'm going to make you guys Champions League winners. We're taking Sunderland to the very top. Also, actually, another thing, should I have custom kits made every couple of seasons and maybe, you know, add different sponsors and things? Because I can do that on PC and it might make it a little bit more interesting. Let me know. It would, it would include a lot of work. I have to pay someone to help me do it, I think, because I'm not that experienced. But it's something we could include in the Road to Glory. You know, maybe a new kit after the third season, something like that. Um, let's go ahead and simulate the pre-season tournament. I'm expecting us to win, really. We don't have... That much competition there. We've got a draw and McGeady's picked up an injury. No. If he's out for a few months, I'm going to be gutted. He's out for three days. That's fine. To follow, we've got a scout report back on. We'll, we'll wait till we get all of those scout reports. Let's go into the next game as we get an offer for Gooch. 
<laughs> Gooch, honestly, I'm so childish. We're blocking that. He's our main right midfielder. He'll be getting in those crosses. He's relatively quick. Let's go ahead and sim this one. They won their last game, but they won't beat us. Surely not. Ah, oh, shh. Okay. 2-1 loss. That's not good. We have to win the next game to make it through. Oh, man. I wasn't really expecting a loss there. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. A four-month injury to start the season. I... <laughs> Wow. So Embleton is now going to be our backup cam as we maybe, well, we have to sign Gomez now. We absolutely have to. What the hell is that, EA? A four-month injury just right off the bat. That's it until Christmas. He's gone. Fantastic. Love to see that. Okay. Well, we have to play on. I haven't started training. Let's do that. Who do I want to train? Uh, geez, no one is... No one is showing promising or whatever it's called. Yeah, promising player except from Embleton there. My God, no one. How is Kimpioka and Mumba not promising players? How? That makes no sense whatsoever. Um, okay, I need to think this through. Who do I want to improve straight away in this season? 100% I want to do probably Dobson. He's going to be a big part. He's going to be next to... Oh, but we've got Max Power... Shit, if I sign Gravenbirch, how do I get all three in? One of them has to be dropped. I guess it would be Dobson and Gravenbirch in midfield. or oh, that That's that's made it a little bit more difficult. We'll, we'll throw Embleton in and we'll do his shooting. Do I do speed shooting? Let's do that one. And then we'll do his dribbling as well. Race against the clock. And we'll do his... Uh, we might as well include another one as well. Maybe his defending... Yeah, let's do that one. Should I try and put him in five drills? Just get him going up because we're going to need him now, aren't we? Uh, we could do his passing. Long pass. Vision long pass. Uh, let's do vision and long passing. That's fine. We'll put someone else in here. We'll go with center back. No, we won't. We'll go with Hume. Hume's going to be a big player for us. Let's do his defending as well. And that is what we're going to do for training at the start. Not too bad. Hume got a D though. Not the best. So this game's actually very big. Very big. If we win this, we will make it through to the semi-finals. We're at home. Technically not, but you know what I mean. The game won't know. There you go. A 2-0 win. McGeady and Grigg scoring. So McGeady came back from that little injury and actually won us the game and put us into the semi-finals. So we go again here. We've got some scout reports. Cool. We won't take a look at them just yet because they're not all finished. We got some prize money there. Another 495k. I believe the preseason tournament was for 1.7 million. Something like that. Let's hope we can get another win here and make it into the final. Come on. Do it for me. Yes! Gooch and McGeady. Brilliant. So now we're going to make a little bit more money. How much did we make for that? 720. You have to be joking me. There... No. I... I... <laughs> Genuinely, I am absolutely fuming right now. My highest rated player also out for four months. You have to be kidding me. I don't really have another left midfielder. Oh my god, you're telling me we have to play what more? Or maybe Kimpioka comes in. I can't believe this. How is that a thing? Two four-month injuries in a pre-season tournament. Oh, I'm absolutely fuming. I cannot believe that. <laughs> wow, okay. It is what it is. It's a road to glory. You're going to get injuries that really hurt your chances of winning games. That really does suck, though. That really, really sucks. Uh, I'm not selling him. If anything, I'm going to sell Lead Biter because I don't need him, potentially. I'm so down now. What the hell? Hey, Zeus going to Juventus or Piemonte Calcio, sorry. Okay, the only thing that's going to cheer me up is a win against Hureven from the Netherlands. 
If we win this, which I doubt we will, I'll be very happy. No. We lost 3-1. Oh, man. Okay, well, the preseason tournament got us about a million, just over a million, but we lost two players. So it wasn't really a success, I'm not going to lie. Um, kind of sucks. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of all of these scout reports. I think that's everyone done now. And let's take a look and see what we've got. Transfer hub. So 68 rated for Gomez, 74 for Tuan Zebe. There's no chance we're signing him. 62 rated, 64, 63, 66, 69, 70 rated right back. Okay, I didn't expect that. Dahlberg, Kilman is six. I'm sorry, what? Kilman, a player that's playing for Wolves in the Premier League. He's actually getting into the team. 63 rated. I'm, I'm almost tempted to sign him just to prove Wolves. No, not prove Wolves. Prove EA wrong. That's ridiculous. How is he only 63 rated? He would cost us what? Half a million. Wow, I am so tempted. He is honestly right up there for me now. 65, 71, 72 rated for Edwards. Wow, okay. Brown, Harper, Ecklenkamp, Gravenberg, 69 rated. Okay, so oof, we're looking at 2 million probably to sign him. Oh man, what a player he is though. What a player. Uh, okay, um... We can't sign Robinson. Tofolo could be a good shout. But maybe I don't sign a left back now. Maybe I sign a left mid because we've now got an injury to our best player in that position. Fletcher's only 69 rated. He's on quite a high wage there. That that actually doesn't make me feel too pleased. Um, okay. I think we go with Kilman, Gomez, and Gravenbirch. Gomez can play on the left. Graven Birch could play at Cam, couldn't he? Ooh, okay. Yeah, we could do that. Just, just until the injuries settle down, we can play Gomez out on the left. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way, I've adjusted a few positions of these players already just because I'm obsessed. So I've made Gomez a Cam and a left mid. I just did it because I was bored wait, waiting to record this. It was, it was too late at night. So... Let's go with Gomez. He is the most important player. We've got to sign him. So 1.7 million. He's on 10k. Do I buy him or do I loan him? I think I buy him. Because, I mean, he's only he's only going to get more expensive. And he is a player that I want to have permanently at some point in this series. The fact that we've picked up the injury at Cam and left mid makes him absolutely vital. So, he is 1.7 million. We're probably looking at maybe two. But, of course, we are not going to be going in with two million. We're going to try 1.6 and just test the waters. And let's see what they say. Okay. 2% sell on claws. Yep, we'll take that. <laughs> 1.6 million. And 2%, 2%. I would have taken 20. That is ridiculous. Okay, maybe I have to include the fake clause thing I was talking about. Maybe next season I will deduct a little bit of money and the season after that as if I'm paying for Gomez in installments because that, I'm sorry, but that is ridiculous. 1.6 million. Okay, let's negotiate his wages. This is going to be the interesting part. I don't know where this is going to, where it's going to go. He only wants an important squad role, so that's fine. We'll take that. A five five year contract. I thought he was going to ask for one. Brilliant. Five years locked at whatever wage we pay him. That is a GG. We're not going to be adding release clause, of course. He doesn't want one either. Please request money. Yes. Oh my God. He only wants six point eight. I was willing to give him ten. So that's an absolute bargain. Let's try and remove the appearances bonus. Let's uh, let's try 6.5 and 60k. What do you reckon? Is he going to storm out? Please don't storm out. I don't need that right now. Okay then. Um, wow, I, I, I don't know what to say. We just signed one of the best young players in the game for less than 2 million. Okay. Okay, and his wage was cheap as well. I 
Okay then, so Gomez, welcome to Sunderland, our first big signing. Maguire, of course, with the injury comes out. Gomez goes in. What a player we just signed. He's going to be absolutely superb for us. So, Gravenbirch, I guess we put Gomez on the left and then put Gravenbirch there. I think that's the best shout for now, isn't it? And then we've signed two core players that I build the team around. So I think that's what we want to do here. We could go for Chalibur. But come on, Gravenbirch looked really good. Let's have a look at his stats in more detail. So he can play centre mid CDM. I might have to add Cam as that position. I'm sure he could play Cam. What's, his defending's 52, so he's definitely more of an attacking player. Good sprint speed there. Agility, jumping. His stamina's decent. He's pretty strong as well. Uh, long shots are decent. His finishing could be worked on, but of course, if we sign him, he goes straight into training. So I'm doing it. We're looking at 1.9 million value. Okay, how much did I have left? I didn't check. We should be able to see that. 4 million left. So we can easily afford this deal. It's just whether or not I can get it cheap. I'm going to try and offer Lead Biter. Lead Biter is going to be included in this. He's worth 320k. They're not interested, are they? No, they want a fullback, striker, or a centre back. Um, I don't, I don't really have any others. We could maybe offer Ozturk, but no, no. Okay, transfer fee it is. Let's do the same again. Let's offer 100k less than his value and just see what they say. And. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the 2% strikes again. How? How is this a thing? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I will take it. Of course, I, I'd be mental not to. Graven Birch. For 1.6 million, was it? Or 1.8 million? What the? <laughs> okay. Let's go. Oh, he's on 1,000 per week as well. <laughs> What? He's on a thousand per week. This is going to be so cheap. He wants crucial. That's fine. Of course it is. Oh my god, this is unbelievable. Will he take five years? I bet you he only wants one year. Let's see. What? He'll take five years as well. Oh, these poor guys. Actually, no. They're in luck because they just got the Road to Glory boss. Okay, we are going to be taking them to the top of their game, man. No release clause. Go on, take 500 a week. <laughs> what does he want? I mean, he's on a thousand. I f I feel bad. Okay, so I'm I'm actually gonna make him triple his wages, three k. Boom! I'm just feeling generous right now, and of course he accepts it. Welcome to England. Welcome to the future champions of England. We are gonna be taking you on a long, long journey. Magidi comes out, and we take Graven Birch and put him in. So. It makes sense to play him as the attacking midfielder. He is better than both these centre midfielders in that position. I could play Embleton there when maybe Gravenbirch isn't working, but what more could play there, I guess? McNulty could probably do a job there. Even Will Grigg could drop down, but Gravenbirch at Cam for now. I think that makes sense. Now we need a centre back, and I'm thinking Kilman. I think Kilman would be a really good shout. I know he's low rated at the moment, but with some training, I genuinely reckon we could get him probably to mid 70s by the time we're in the championship to Premier League. I don't know. Really depends on if he's got the promising talent thing. I wonder what his potential actually is. Oh, that that makes things a little bit difficult. If his potential is really low, I just have to play really well with him and therefore the dynamic potential will make him better. But I did say I wanted to sign a core. A core of players. We've gone two midfielders, centre back, and then eventually maybe a striker. It, it could pan out quite well. We've got uh, Jack Simpson as well. He would be a lot more expensive. His wages are a bit higher as well, but he's higher rated. Um. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm going to go with my gut, and I'm going to take Kilman. Six foot five, left footed. He's got really nice four star weak foot as well. And he's going to be so cheap. I'm going to throw in 
350k. If they accept that, I mean, that would be rather hilarious. 350k for a Premier League centre-back. There's no way. Yeah. 370 and 1%. 1%. If we sell him for 100 million, they're going to get 1 million. Well done. Great business, Wolves. Great business. But, of course, the real problem is going to be his wages. His wages are quite high at 9.4k. Of course, he's a Premier League player. Uh, we'll throw him in as an important. I guess that'll be okay. Yeah, he's fine with that. I genuinely think Kilman should be in the 70s. After watching him play for Wolves recently, he was amazing. Let's try and tie him down to five years as well. No way! All three signings are at the moment going to be on five years each. That's incredible. No release clause, but what does he want money-wise? Oh, shh. Um, okay, so if he's on 9.4, he will, of course, have to come down from that, and the game should allow me to do that. So let's go in with six, maybe. Um... Let's try five and we'll whack in 100k. Or no, we'll try we'll try 50k as a bonus. If he takes that, I will be over the moon. Okay, I wasn't far off. Um, let's take off the appearances. That seems okay to me. Oof, okay. If he takes 6.5 and 55k as a bonus, then we've got a deal. Boom! Three signings made. Fantastic. That's all I'm going to do. And now we rely on the Youth Academy. So just before we finish this first episode, which has been crazy so far, I want to list a couple of players up for sale. Um, oh, we've got we've got a defender out on loan at Salford City. Okay, so he'll come back next season. He's pretty decent. What's he doing out on loan? That makes no sense to me. Uh, okay, centre-backs... It might be worth selling one of them. Um, maybe Lynch, 31 years old. Kilman's coming in and replacing him. I think that's probably a good shout. We'll put Lynch up for sale. Then we have Samut. Oh, he's got his actual face. Look at that. Contract expiring in 12 months. He's 21 years old and only 59 rated. I think we'll keep him for now because Leadbiter is going to be going. So we'll put him up for sale. We've got Robson out on loan. Okay. Keep all of these guys. Uh, do I sell one striker? Because I'm not going to need all three. No. I think we, we leave it as it is. So I need to adjust some of the numbers. So Gomez. He can't have 10, can he? Because McNulty's got it. Let's give him 20. Yep. Graven Birch had it. So let's give Gomez 20. Graven Birch can have... 15, I guess. Let's see what else is available. 25. What number was he? I'll check what number he was before I do that, actually. He can have the one he had before. And who was the other one? We had uh, Kilman. I'll give him number 15 or 23. 23 is taken by Leadbitter. Yeah, see you later, Leadbitter. Um, that's good. I'll tell you what. We'll give Graven Birch number 15. And then we're done. Boom. I'm happy with that. So those players up for sale, we'll hopefully sell those. Um, we'll start youth scouts reports soon. We'll be able to have a look at what's going on there. We just got an email from the board saying great work. Brand exposure complete. But that is it for episode one of the Sunderland Road to Glory. Uh, I've got to say thank you so much for voting. Even though you guys made it almost impossible for me to choose, thankfully... In the end, Sunderland did win by 2%. And I think it's the right choice. I forgot to mention this at the start, but the the reason Sunderland was my favoured one was because it's new. I, I haven't really revisited teams in the past because you want to do something new. So Sunderland being a team that I've not played with, it made sense. Um, and I'm happy that we're doing it. Portsmouth would have been great as well, though. So don't worry, that will come up at some point, probably in FIFA 21. We'll go back to Portsmouth then. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're going to enjoy this series. It's going to be a long one. 
Who knows when it's going to finish? It might be March, for all we know. It's going to be a long one, but I really, really want this to be one of the best Road to Glories I've ever done and one to remember like some of the old ones. So please do support it by leaving a like, leaving a comment. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram and all that stuff. And I will see you tomorrow for episode two.